Crisis on Infinite Earths Paragon Rising finds Nash Wells, better known as Pariah, arrive on the New 52 Earth, finding that Superman and the Justice League have been erased from existence. A panicking man with his daughter asks if the suddenly appearing Wells did this, but Pariah hugs him knowing that he didn't, but he can try and protect him from the antimatter wave. He grabs the man and child, telling them not to let go as Bethany Snow continues to report the news, knowing that she'll stay there until the end, wishing her listeners good luck. Pryor, however, is forced to watch as the entirety of the New 52 Earth is wiped from existence around him before he is teleported to Earth F, where on the Daily Planet, Lois Lane takes pictures of the oncoming wave, knowing this is going to be the story of the century and she refuses to miss it as Superman leaps in front of her, telling the woman that she's coming with him. Pryor tries to get them to move, but again, it's too late as the wave erases them. Harbinger appears, just in time to see Pryor move on again. She knows that she got to Earth F too late to save the others, but the next target is Earth X, promising the Monitor that she will not fail and will save the heroes. On Earth X, Nazis attack a train as the Freedom Fighters arrive, wiping them out as Ray tells the team to protect the weapon on the train until it gets to their allies. Red Tornado picks up something moving in fast, but Ray tells them to stay ahead of whatever it is. The antimatter wave begins eating up the train and train tracks, as Ray spots the Nazis even shooting at the wave as Harbinger grabs him, pulling Ray into the Wave Rider, where he meets with the Flash, White Canary, and the other heroes of Earth-1. Ray wants to know where his team is, wanting to go and help them, but Monitor tells him that that's impossible since his universe no longer exists. Ray knows they can't just destroy an entire universe since that's impossible, but Felicity demands to know what Monitor isn't telling her, so the being says that she must come with him to fulfill her destiny. Kid Flash wants to know what he means, but Monitor cryptically tells him that they will get their answers soon, showing them a hologram of Pariah and telling the team that he has information they need. Ray meanwhile introduces himself to Felicity before spotting Nisia al Ghul, whom Ray knows is a good friend of his from his world. The Monitor reveals to the team that before the Anti-Monitor moves to a new universe, Pariah finds himself on that world, and with any luck, they should be able to find the next Doom world and mount a defense there. Wally thinks that they need to beat up Pryor and get the info from him, but Monitor tells him they actually need to find Outcast, Pryor's anti-matter doppelganger, reassuring them that they will get the answers that they want soon. Monitor disappears to make preparations, angering Felicity, who wants to know where Oliver is. She knows that if he won't answer some questions, maybe Wave Rider's AI will. Later on, Felicity confronts Ma in his chambers, revealing she hacked the Wave Rider's records and discovered that Oliver Queen is dead, demanding to know why the being never told her. Monitor says that the Queen died saving lives, and now they must act to save worlds, since Outcast knows the identities of the Paragons that can respark the multiverse should the Anti-Monitor purge its existence. He tells Felicity to mourn her husband and honor his legacy, wanting his sacrifice to not be in vain. Felicity curses him, hiding out in the study where Harbinger finds her. She demands to know why Lila never told her that, but Lila says that she couldn't and hasn't been able to find the words to tell even Diggle yet. Felicity hugs her friend, wondering what she is to do now. Monitor meanwhile feels another Earth is being taken, sending the heroes to Earth 76 to confront Outcast as the world's Wonder Woman suits up, saving some people as Pryor battles his evil doppelganger. Wonder Woman's heroics are in vain as the antimatter wave erases her and her world. Nissa shoots Outcast in the back with an arrow, injuring him before telling the man that being a doppelganger of Pryor, he should too feel the same pains when each multiverse is wiped out. Outcast says that he does, but it doesn't weaken him, it strengthens him. He teleports away, having distracted the heroes long enough, leaving the antimatter wave to bear down on the heroes with no time to escape. Luckily, Harbinger grabs the heroes, quickly pulling them through a portal back to the Wave Rider. Felicity soon finds Barry, wanting to talk with him about Oliver, but Felicity drags him into the chip, telling him that there is a reason Monitor wants them to take down Outcast because the Monitor believes that he can lead them to the Paragons and respark the universe, and if he can lead them to those people, he could lead them to Oliver. Barry thinks that she's just in shock, but she she reminds him that she is focused as can be, and with all of the resurrected people they've seen and had encountered, it has to be possible to bring Oliver back. She soon gets Outcast's next location, as on Earth D, Outcast unleashes his shadow demons onto the world. The Justice Alliance of the world
world battles back as the Flash and the Earth-1 heroes arrive, battling side by side with the Earth-D heroes to stop the demons. Outcast fires his energy beam at Flash and Kid Flash catches it, protecting Barry but in the process gets zapped from existence. Barry becomes angered, speeding up to the villain and beating him unconscious. Batwoman and Ray pull him off the villain, telling him that if he kills Outcast, his knowledge dies with him. Pariah arrives, telling them to keep Barry back since his speed could ignite the positive and negative matter. Pryor begins tapping into his doppelganger's mind as Barry calms himself knowing that he's mad and frustrated but he won't do anything stupid. He asks how they contain the villain and Monitor luckily has a chamber constructed to keep him in check. Later after imprisoning Outcast on Monitor's satellite, the villain reveals that he doesn't know who the Paragons are and where to find them. Felicity thinks that he's lying as he says that the Anti-Monitor needed them to believe that he knew in order to get them all in one room since he's actually a living antimatter bomb, powerful enough to destroy their entire universe. He unleashes his power, obliterating the Monitor's satellite, but not before Harbinger pulls the team back to Wave Rider. Felicity hugs Flash, telling him that Outcast was her last chance at getting Oliver back, which confuses Barry on how, but Felicity knows the Monitor wouldn't want her telling him. She storms off as Flash tells White Canary to give her some alone time. Felicity returns to Earth-1, continuing to pore over the secrets of the Paragons and why they aren't finding them as Ray and Nissa al Ghul arrive. She knows they were sent to talk her down, but Nissa says that he is concerned, and they all are, wanting to know what she's working on. Felicity says that Outcast was meant to give them the names of the Paragons, and she thinks that Oliver is one of these Paragons. Ray knows that she is talking about stuff that is rather cosmic in nature, and her terrestrial computer surely can't find these Paragons in the multiverse. Felicity, however, says that she can, though, hack in to monitors computers and she has taken information he isn't sharing. Information like the vibrational frequency of the Earth that the Book of Oa exists on. Ray doesn't know what this is so Felicity tells him that it's a repository of all the multiversal knowledge and she thinks the identity and locations of the Paragons is in it. She opens a multiversal portal telling the others to feel free to come with her if they want. Ray and Nyssa know they probably should go with her as on Earth 85 at the dawn of time various Justice Leagues and the heroes of the their Earths battle the Anti-Monitor as Felicity and the others arrive, knowing that this is where they'll find a guy who can send them to Oa. Ray and Felicity are shocked at the scale of what they are witnessing as the Phantom Stranger appears, telling them that no one can defeat the Anti-Monitor, but knows that they didn't come to fight. He reveals that he knows Felicity's name as the woman figures that he's the one who can get them to Oa. Stranger agrees to help, knowing that the path doesn't lead to the resurrection of Oliver Queen, but the multiverse entirely depends on her divining the identities of the other Paragons. Felicity and the others are sent to Earth-12, where they meet with the Guardians of Oa, who are quick to silence her, knowing it why she has come to see them and what is happening in all the other realities. They confirm that they have the knowledge of the Paragons as Felicity tells them to quit their mind games and tell them, since the Anti-Monitor threatens to wipe even them out but they can save the multiverse if she is allowed to see the Book of Oa. The Guardians say that the book isn't for mortal eyes, but Felicity doesn't care, not having traveled the entire multiverse to be told no. She tells them that the Paragons aren't just the last hope to save her husband, but also billions of others across the multiverse, and even the multiverse itself. The Guardians still refuse, so Felicity tells them that she knows this isn't about them wanting to protect her sanity, since she's stronger than they think. The Guardians think her as arrogant, since the book is written in time itself and a single page would reduce her mind to a puddle and she would beg them for death. Ganthit soon arrives to the meeting late, taking his seat and decides to vote in favour of Felicity as suddenly Anti-Monitor's shadow demons attack. Ray gets Felicity out of the area as Nyssa calls for some backup against the demons. The Guardians know the demons won't care for them for now, but they will need reinforcements as the Green Lantern Corps arrive, led by Kilowog, Termaray and Sinestro, who blow through the hordes of demons making a game out of it. Ray meanwhile is blasted down by a demon, throwing Felicity to the ground. The hero tells Felicity to watch out as Ganthet saves her from a demon, teleporting her down to the central power battery. Felicity says that she never could imagine something amazing like this planet, but Ganthet knows that she'll get over it. Sinestro and Killawog continue their games as they cut through the demon hordes while Ray saves Nyssa, who knows there's far too many demons and they are too powerful. Killawog thinks that they are too powerful as well since they have the Green Lantern Corps and they will crush anyone who worships 
worships evil's might. Ganthet meanwhile shows Felicity the Book of Oa, but when she tries to touch it, a demon leaps out of it, trying to strangle her. She's pulled inside the book where she sees images from inside, including her daughter Mia and even Oliver, reaching out to him but he is soon pulled back into a bright light. She sees that time wants to claim her and wants to make her part of everything and every when. Ganthet manages to grab her, telling her not to surrender to time since it lies to her and offers temptations greater than the human soul can handle. He tells her to return to reality so the woman manages to pull herself from the book. Soon learning from Ganthet that her friends are safe and have been returned to the Wave Rider after the defeat of the demons. He opens a portal to the Wave Rider for her and her friends say they want to examine her in the med bay to make sure she hasn't been altered in any way, but Felicity says she feels fine. However, Ganthet checks her over in the med bay, finding she is indeed unharmed. Felicity quickly says her goodbyes, knowing that she needs to find Barry, heading to the library where she finds him, but Barry says he's not doing very well since he's just lost Wally and Oliver. Felicity tells him that she knows what the multiverse needs, wanting him to find a Lazarus pit and to use it to bring Oliver back. Not knowing how she knows it, but it's Oliver's destiny and if he fulfills it, he could bring everyone back and save the multiverse. She tells Barry that she can't tell him exactly how she knows this, since it might not happen if she tells him, and the stake of everything has never been higher, wanting Barry to trust her. Barry asks what she's going to do, so the woman says that she's going to go home and hold her daughter and protect her as they wait for the inevitable end. She says goodbye to Barry, hoping she gets to see her friend again some other time. As Felicity leaves, the older Mia walks down the hallway of the Wave Rider, so to avoid any timeline related problems, Felicity hides from her daughter, knowing not letting Letting her see her or even being able to hug her is the hardest thing she has ever had to do. Felicity goes to see Monitor, who asks if she knows who the Paragons are. Felicity tells him that she read the Book of Oa and he will just have to be happy with the information it gave her, since she only knows four of the seven Paragons. Telling him that Supergirl and Sarah Lance are two of them, and the other two she only has clues on their identities, knowing that one is the Bat of the Future, and the other is a Kryptonian who has suffered a greater loss than most mortal men could endure. She heads back home. Home, cradling the baby Mia in front of a fire, knowing that she didn't tell Monitor or Barry about Oliver thanks to wanting to give the mysterious being a taste of his own medicine. Instead, however, she tells Mia all about her father and how Oliver's purpose has gotten bigger, and his goal is no longer to protect a single city, but an entire multiverse, and to do this, he must become something more. He must become the Spectre. On Earth 1938, Lex Luthor makes his escape from prison, confronted by some guards who he attacks with a wasp drone he made in the prison workshop. The drone stings a guard, killing him as the other guard shoots and kills the Lex, telling him that his friend had a wife and three kids. On Earth 74's Wave Rider, Lex isn't too happy he was resurrected only to be made a prisoner, wondering if he could bribe Lila to let him go. Harbinger reminds him of what she is called now, as the man says that she never struck him as the capes and tights wearing woman. Suddenly Harbinger is shot and knocked out by another Lex Luthor, who tells Lex that they have bigger fish to fry now. He thinks that his multiversal counterpart should have been easily able to escape from the cell, so Lex says that he was merely buying his time and he could escape whenever he wanted, showing his counterpart the extra dimensional breach device he took from Harbinger. Lex goes with his counterpart into the multiverse, telling him that the others are waiting for them. Lex is taken to Earth 99, where he meets with the Council of Luthers, who wonder why he didn't receive their subneural summons. Lex says he did, but he just ignored it since he's got more important things to do and things that are more important than all of them. Another Lex becomes angered by his arrogance, but Lex reminds him that he's talking to himself, assuming that they gathered to take advantage of the crisis, since while they want world domination, he sees that as a way to take Superman off the board. One Lex says that they plan on killing all of the Supermen across all realities. Lex knows that if the Anti-Monitor gets in his way, they won't be able to dominate any world or have a Superman-free multiverse to enjoy meaning they should really deal with the anti-monitor first, meaning they will need the cape's help. The Lexes think him to be insane to want to team with Superman, so Lex decides that he's the only Luthor who can fathom what they are facing, then he might as well be the only Luthor left alive. He takes his leave, intending on working on saving all of existence as the others call him an anomaly and he will ruin their plans. The Luthers all agree to kill Lex, something he already knows since he's a better version of them. He heads to Earth-38 and into his Superman's fortress, who demands to know why he is there since he's meant to be on the Wave Rider. Superman grabs him as Lex tells him that he wants to save the multiverse. Superman knows that he's always in it for himself and Lex knows that's why he needs to save the universe and why he needs Superman's help. 
Suddenly, another Luther appears, grabbing Lex as he throws a device at Superman, covering him in metal tentacles. Superman battles against the tentacles outside of the fortress, knowing that it was a mistake to come to this fortress, but he wanted to get the Kryptonian rattle for Jonathan. He rips the trap off of himself, speeding back down into the fortress to deal with Luther, finding it strange that Luther was actually telling the truth about the multiverse, which would be a first. Superman returns only to find a group of multiversal Supermen waiting for him. The Kingdom Come Superman tells him they need to talk with Clark, telling him they're in the midst of a crisis. Clark says that it's worse than they think as Lex has gathered multiversal versions of himself together. Superman asks how he knows this, so Clark says that his Lex told him, knowing that while he doesn't trust him, he does believe the man thanks to his heartbeat, which signaled Lex was afraid. Above Earth-99, the Council of Luthers charge Lex with treason for conspiring with Superman, who is no doubt gathering the other Supermen from the multiverse as they speak. Lex tells them to stop being so narcissistic since if the Supermen are gathering it's because of the crisis, which is why his Superman thought he was on Earth-38, despite Earth-38 actually being wiped out. Lex is sealed in a force shield, and later, Lex removes one of his teeth, which contains a way to neutralize the shield. He wonders what Superman is up to, as Clark realizes this fortress isn't his, and they are actually on Earth-86, as one of the Supermen tells him that above Earth-99, the Luthers are gathering, looking for some tactical advantage during the crisis. The Luthers, meanwhile, continue to mash produce their war suits, knowing that with Superman distracted, they'll be able to pick them off with ease. Suddenly, the Supermen arrive through a breach, assaulting the Council of Luther's base and freeing Lex. Lex says that he was just about to escape, warning his Superman to be careful since the other Luthers are mass-producing their power suits to battle the Supermen, and he only knows this because that is what he would do. The war-suited Luthers arrive, attacking the Supermen with kryptonite weapons as Superman and Lex make it to a computer system. Clark tells Lex to make himself useful and disable the kryptonite weapons in the suits as Lex finds that they are drawing power from the tower. And and he can rig it to blow up. As Lex works, he wonders why he is helping Superman since he finds them being beaten quite beautiful. He knows that if anyone is going to kill Superman, it will be him, the real Lex Luthor, not some multiversal knockoff. He finally manages to get the countdown working on the tower, but tells Superman not to thank him since he's rather conflicted about him not dying. Superman knows that if it's any consolation, they didn't exactly need his help. The Superman managed to beat back the Luthers as the tower explodes, causing the Luthers to escape back through a breach. Superman returns to Luther, who quickly reminds him that he was a helper and he doesn't want him to return him to his cell on the Wave Rider. Superman, however, does so, returning Lex to the cell where he thinks that the Luthers had a good idea and that killing all of the Supermen in all realities is smart, but they were the wrong Luthers to do it. Harbinger asks what's on his mind, so the man says that he just had a novel idea pop into his head, quickly checkmating the woman in their game.